Hello everyone, welcome back to 5 Minute Edison Rulings. So today we're going to be going over Diva Zombies. Diva Zombies is a very popular deck in Edison format and a very powerful one. Today we have Juan Soto's Diva Zombie list that you may be familiar with if you've seen his feature matches on the channel. So the first card we're going to be looking at is Goblin Zombie. Goblin Zombie has a mandatory effect that if it's sent from the field to the graveyard, you add a zombie monster with 1200 or less defense. When you have mandatory effects activated in the grave on the summon of something that has a priority effect, it will automatically become chain link 1 and you might not be able to activate that priority effect. In this scenario, what we're going to be doing is, after we draw for turn, we're going to Synchro Summon using this Goblin Zombie. We're going to go into Brianek, and because Goblin Zombie is mandatory Chain Link 1, we cannot respond to our opponent's Bottomless Trap Hole with Ignition Priority from Brianek. Uh, as a result, our Brianek is banished and we get our search. The second card we're going to be talking about is Book of Life. Now, this effect is simultaneous, meaning that even if something in the chain moves the cards that are being targeted, they'll still have to be either banished or special summoned. In this scenario, I have in my graveyard a goblin zombie that we're going to be special summoning with Book of Life. And this is how it plays out. So we activate Book of Life targeting my goblin zombie and my opponent's unifrog. Now, my opponent is going to chain GD Crow, targeting the Goblin Zombie. Now, even though Goblin Zombie is banished from GD Crow, it'll still banish the monster that I targeted with Book of Life, which would be Unifrog. The next card we'll be talking about is Revived King Hades. Revived King Hades has the effect that it will negate the effects of effect monsters destroyed by battle with zombie monsters you control. Um, when zombie monsters attack a monster, say like Treeborn Frog, Mystic Tomato, or any other monsters that have effects that apply in the damage step, Revive King Hades will negate that. Now, in this scenario, we have my Revive King Hades hit into my opponent's Treeborn Frog. The Treeborn Frog will be destroyed, and in their next standby phase, they will attempt to activate Treeborn Frog. However, so long as that monster is in the graveyard, Revive King Hades' effect lingers and it will not be able to activate. So, like I said, they attempt to activate Tree Warm Rock's effect, and as long as it's in the graveyard, it can't activate its effect. Another scenario that we have here is what happens when Revive King Hades battles a monster such as Dee Warrior Lady. Now, as you know, Dee Warrior Lady banishes itself and the monster that it battles during the damage step. However, Revive King Hades activates in sub-step 4 when it's marked for destruction. Because Revive King Hades activates in sub-step 4, all other monster effects that activate in the following sub-steps, such as DD Warrior Lady in sub-step 6, they cannot activate because they've been marked for destruction by Revive King Hades. So in this scenario, we have our opponent... Uh, during the battle phase, activate enemy controller, tributing their monster to take control of our DD Warrior Lady, thinking that they can activate DD Warrior Lady when my Revive King Hades attacks it. However, like I said before, Revive King Hades activates before it because it activates its effect as it's marked for destruction in sub step 4. So, what'll happen here is Revive King Hades will just destroy DD Warrior Lady and they'll take damage. The next card that we'll be talking about is Spirit Reaper. Spirit Reaper has a notorious effect that after resolving a card effect that targets Spirit Reaper face up, it's destroyed by its own effect. This may be confusing when you have cards like Book of Moon targeting Spirit Reaper. Now, in this scenario, I have Spirit Reaper on my field and I'm going to be attacking into my opponent directly so that I can discard a card from their hand. Now, my opponent will activate Book of Moon and target my Spirit Reaper. This does not destroy Spirit Reaper. The reason being is because it has to be face up on the field when it's targeting at resolution. So, in this scenario, Book of Moon sets it face down, and because it's no longer face up on the field, Spirit Reaper cannot activate its effect. 
Now, one scenario that can destroy Spirit Reaper that you may not know is when you target Spirit Reaper with a card effect such as Ill Blood. Uh, cards that target it and special summon it from the graveyard, such as Call of the Haunted or Doom Kaiser Dragon, will automatically destroy Spirit Reaper on resolution. So in this scenario, I have a Book of Life, and I'm going to be targeting my Ill Blood and the opponent's DD Warrior Lady in their graveyard and special summoning it. After that, I'm going to be normal summoning my Ill Blood in order to activate its Gemini effect, uh, which special summons the Spirit Reaper. Now, because this effect continuously targets the Spirit Reaper that special summoned, on resolution, Spirit Reaper will destroy itself. If you enjoy this content, please like and subscribe, and I'd love to see in the comments what you would like to see next in 5-Minute Edison. Thank you and have a nice day. See ya!